Hey everyone, um, so this is just going to be a pre-lab lecture for the glassware calibration lab. If you're in group A, we're going to be doing it next week, and if you're in group B, you're going to be doing it the following week. So real quick, I'm just going to go over some stuff um, that's going to be useful for you in lab next week. So the purpose of this experiment is for you to become familiar with variations in measurements. And so what that means is that different pieces of glassware are going to provide you with different levels of accuracy. So in today's experiment, we're going to be taking measurements um, using, my lord, by using the density of water as our standard. And I went ahead and wrote the density of water right here for you guys, so make sure you know that. The formula for density is right here, and that is just the mass of solution in grams over the volume of solution in milliliters. And a nice way I like to memorize this is just that D for density equals, and you can draw a heart, cut the heart in half, the top looks like an M, the bottom looks like a volume, like a V for volume, so mass and volume. So for this experiment, what you're gonna need is a small beaker, which is right here. You're gonna need a large beaker, which is right here, so I'm sure you guys are familiar with those. Um, you're also gonna need an Erlenmeyer flask or what is also called an E-flask, and that is right here. We're also going to be using volumetric flask, which is right here. And we're also going to be using a graduated cylinder. So another thing we're going to be using is a digital balance or a scale, right? So uh, when using a scale, we have to understand that some scales are going to be more accurate than others. So we need to understand the limitations that our scales are going to have. You know, some scales might read three decimal places, some might read four, and so you just need to know what it is that you're dealing with. So, um, I have these little scales, I'm just going to do like an example. So, on the scale on the left, it's zeroed out, and you can see that it has one, two, three decimal places. So, that means, let's say we weigh a beaker over here. I'm going to put a beaker on the scale, and then the scale says like 20.152 grams. That means in our notebook, we're gonna write 20.152 grams. What we would not wanna write is like 20.15200 grams. And the reason we wanna write this one and not that one is because when we look at our scale over here, we see that it's only accurate up to three decimal places. So on our measurement, we only want to have one, two, three decimal places. If we look at the one that's not correct, this bottom one, it has one, two, three, four, five decimal places. And the reason is that we don't want to write it like the bottom one is because these last two zeros, we don't actually know if they're zeros. We don't know how accurate that is and our scale doesn't tell us and we don't want to assume. So only write down what the scale tells you. All right, sig figs. So um, I went ahead and just wrote down the three basic rules for significant figures. So the first rule is that all non-zero digits are significant. So over here, I wrote some examples of non-zero digits that would be significant. So it'd be like one, two, or like a three. Those are all examples of significant digits. The second rule is that zeros between two other significant digits are significant. So an example of this would be 1004. And because the 1 and the 4 are significant and the zeros are in between them, that means that every single one of these is going to be considered a significant digit. So here, we're going to have four total sig figs. The third rule is that zeros to the right of the decimal are significant. So in the example here, I have 103.000, so three zeros to the right of the decimal are significant. So that means this is significant, this one, this one, and because there are zeros to the right, it also means that these three here are going to be considered significant. So that means we're going to have six total sig figs. I ran through those pretty fast, so um, I know when I first learned sig figs, it was really confusing and it took a while for me to understand them. So if you still need help, I put two videos in the announcements, uh, in the announcement that I sent you guys. One of them is this one by the Organic Chemistry Tutor. It is quite a long video, 
but he breaks um the whole video is broken down to like different topics of sig figs so maybe you understand one part of sig figs but you don't understand another go watch those videos he explains things really well and um anything you could possibly want to know about sig figs he can explain it to you and then another video that i linked is this one right here she um just goes through the sig figs really fast like i just did and she does a couple of examples so if you feel like you want to practice uh definitely check those out okay so another thing in lab that people don't realize is that in the lab we have two faucets uh, one faucet is going to be tap water and one is going to be di or deionized water so with all of our experiments we're going to want to use the deionized water deionized water just means that we've removed things like you know calcium magnesium just minerals chlorine like whatever it is we have removed it from the water and that way it's only purely just water there's nothing else in there that could mess with our experiment so when we get in the lab what you're going to see in the back is you're going to see two faucets there's going to be a silver faucet and the silver faucet is tap water and then there's going to be the di faucet and the di faucet is the white teflon faucet and i'll point that out again to you guys when we're in lab so don't uh worry if you can't remember Okay, so just some quick calculations. So percent error calculation is one we're going to be using in this lab. So this calculation is for you to compare your known or theoretical value to your experimentally observed value. So an example of what a theoretical value would be is if you have a 100 mil beaker and that glassware has a maximum measurement volume of 100 mils. So that means that our theoretical value would be 100 mils. And the experimental value is what you recorded like when you're in lab and you did your experiment. So the formula for experiment for percent error is right here. So that is your experimental value minus your theoretical value divided by your theoretical value times 100. But what we also, I want you guys to remember because a lot of people mess this up, is that the formula has these absolute bars on the side right here, which means that any number that's in here will always be positive. So don't forget about the absolute value bars. And that is it for that formula. So for next week, the procedure, what you need to do is, you know, just go to the library. You're going to print off your procedure and uh, you are just you're going to read through it. If you need to add any notes or anything to it, that's completely fine. And you're going to bring that with you to lab. Another part of before you're coming into lab is your data sheet markup. And I'm just going to briefly explain to you the like how to do it and hopefully it will make sense so here is i believe the data sheet from the experiment we're doing this week so the first thing i want you guys to do is look at all the different things that we're going to be taking measurements of and on the side of them you're going to write down letters variables whatever you want to write down on the side so it makes sense to you so i wrote down x here and we have A, B, C, D all the way to the bottom. I just went ahead and put variables next to every single thing that we're going to be taking measurements of. After you've done that, I want you to look at all of um, your measurements that you're going to be taking. And I want you to ask yourself, where am I going to find this measurement? Where is it going to come from? Am I going to weigh it? Am I going to read it? And like, where is it going to come from? So, for example mask of mask mass of a full flask in grams so i'm gonna ask myself okay so where is that weight going to come from and your answer would be from the scale so you can just put you can put like scale from scale whatever is going to be easier for you the third thing once you've done those two things is i want you to look at all the things that you're going to be taking and be like, well, are there any equations that I'm going to need to use to maybe solve for one of these? So an example of this, I'll use a different color. This would be the third thing you're going to do. So you're looking through all your stuff, right? And you're going to be like, okay, percent error. That's something I'm going to have to calculate. And you're going to be like, okay, so what is the formula? You know, we just talked about the formula right here. So there's the formula. But what I want you to do is I want you to take that formula and we said it was experimental minus theoretical over theoretical, right? So experimental minus theoretical over theoretical. So we're going to look on the data sheet and be like, okay, what is our theoretical? And it would be this right here, D. 
So we're just going to go ahead and plug in variable d. And then we're going to do minus x. And x is up here. So we're just going to do x minus x times 100. And that is going to be our percent error. You cannot read that. I'm sorry. That's your percent error, but you're going to put the variables in. That way, when you're in lab, you don't have to think about, oh, where are these numbers? I don't know. You already know. You know that it's D minus X, and you can be over here and be like, okay, this is D. Here's the D value. Here's X. Here's my X value. That way, you can just plug it in. It'll be super easy. So um, some other examples of this are, so let's say you have to take the average of something. So using the letters that you assign to all your different things, you're going to be like, Okay, so the average volume in a full beaker. So here I have D, I, and N. Because we're wanting the average. I'm going to use a different color. Maybe that'll be better. Uh, let's see if green shows up. So we were finding the average experimental volume in a full beaker. So the volume of a full beaker. Volume of a full beaker. And then the volume of a full beaker. So here I know the measurements are right here when I find them in lab. But because I know that D, I, and I believe N are the ones that we're going to be averaging, I can just write the formula D plus I plus N divide by three. That way when you're in lab, you don't have to spend time looking for all the numbers. You already know that D, I, and N are gonna be the ones that you're going to be averaging together. And the same thing, um, it's the same thing for this equation right here too. Just some examples. Hopefully that makes sense. If you still have questions about this, uh, send me an email. I know it can be a little confusing. So that's pretty much everything um, in the announcements um, that I'm sending you guys. I'm going to... Okay, wait. Oh, god dang it. Okay, so, sorry. So, come to all prepared. So that just means... The first thing you're going to, want to do is you're going to watch the pre-lab video, which you're doing right now. So that's great. You've already done that one. Cross it off. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go print out your procedure and you're going to do the data sheet markup, which is what we just talked about. And that's like the work work that you're going to have to do before you come into lab. Now, when it's time for you to actually come into lab, you need to make sure that you have a face mask and that you have your safety glasses, that you're wearing appropriate clothing. Please make sure you're wearing long socks. Also, Make sure that you have your school ID or your driver's license. Go ahead and take your phone and take a picture of one of those. That way, it will always be on your phone. So even if you forget your wallet at home, you'll still have a picture of it. Because if you come to lab and you have to check something out, but you don't have your ID, you're not going to be able to do your lab for the day. So go ahead and just take a picture of it. That way, we don't have to worry about that. Also, make sure you bring a pen and a calculator. I would also maybe put like some money in your backpack because if you come to lab and you know you need something or you forgot something you might have to go to the stock room and rent goggles or something 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 so i'm gonna go ahead and just put put like five dollars in your bag just in case maybe with some long socks so we don't have to worry about that um if you have any questions uh shoot me an email i try to answer pretty quickly and hopefully i can get whatever you guys need taken care of other than that i hope you guys have a great day